Hi, I'm Dean Perrine, Executive Vice President at JSA, and on behalf of Light River, I'd like to welcome Mr. Travis Ewert. Travis is the uh, Chief Operating Officer at Light River, and Mr. Alec Gilner. Alec is the Senior Vice President of Sales, also at Light River. Gentlemen, thank you very much for being with me today. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks, Dean, and thanks to, to JSA TV. Yeah, thanks for having me, Dean. You bet, you bet. Thanks, guys. Before we get into talking about aliens, a little teaser for those of you watching, why don't you tell us a little bit about Light River? Yeah, you bet, Dean, and, and thanks again for having us here today. I mean, at, at, you know, at Light River, you know, we engineer, we build, we deploy, you know, and automate some of the largest and most complex networks out there. You know, typically these networks are multi-vendor and, you know, multi-technology in nature, and, you know, our customers represent Tier one, wireless, wireline, the FANG, hyperscale folks, data center exchange, largest fiber codes. So uh, we, do, we do a lot for a lot of people, but uh, you know, our two main lines of business are our factory built network you know, that supports upfront lab build and deployment of these networks, as well as Netflix or automation platform. And you know, for both of these, the focus is on multi-vendor and multi-technology, which is absolutely key to this discussion. Awesome. Okay, so let's get right into the meat and potatoes, the part that I'm most excited to uh, to discuss with you. Alien aware networking. What in the world are we talking about here? Travis, back to you. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, this does require a little bit of an explanation, right? So, you know, if, uh, if you look at traditional optical networking, you know, it typically reflects, you know, end to end technology from a single supplier. And, you know, what you get with this approach is, is basically you, you get a network that's more or less proven in by way of test and performance and you know network management through a, a supplier's respective element management system or EMS. So you know if you look at you know open optical and network diseg, that model is completely disrupted or changed. And you know what you end up with is more of a, a bring your own or BYO, you know, for best in breed transponder, muxponder you know, uh, pluggables, colored option, optics into your layer two, layer three instance, uh, you know, all, all of which over, you know, an existing or a new open line system. And I know that's a mouthful, but, you know, in this model, you know, what used to be, you know, an end-to-end -end wave, wavelength or optical service that was more or less known and managed end-to-end, -end, that's now foreign or what our, our industry called alien, you know, as an alien wavelength. So, you know, for alien aware networking, that really highlights awareness and the fact that we can see it end to end, test it, know it, manage it end to end. And that's really uh, what's behind the alien aware networking messaging. And you mentioned, you mentioned wavelength. So Alec, I'm going to jump, uh, let you jump in here too. Like sure. as a product offering focused on optical disaggregation and alien wavelengths, what exactly does Light River provide within your alien aware networking offering? Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a suite of tools that will allow the operator to realize the CapEx savings from network disag uh, with the primary benefit though of not having to hire specialized headcount than to operate and maintain that system, right? So key benefit of our solution is we can avoid uh, vendor lock-in and we allow the operator to effectively deploy best of breed solutions as they're actually released to the market, okay? Uh, we do this uh, by giving them a, a full suite of uh, design, build, and, and automation functions that cover the whole life cycle of a disaggregated solution. And I'd just like to point out that, you know, Light River, we're the very first, uh, you know, to put this kind of solu solution to market. And, you know, it's across, you know, not just multiple uh, vendors, but also across, you know, multiple technologies that a vendor may offer as well. So this question is probably for both of you, um, but what are, you know, can you give us some, uh, some good examples around alien aware networking and the, and the product offering that you, that you just described, you know, how, how does that help a network operator? Um, Travis, you want to go first? Yeah, you, you bet. I mean, you know, on the automation side of things, I mean, we're working directly with large operators to, to provide this end-to-end -end management, you know, across their, their newly introduced or newly minted, uh, disag network and you know what what is cool is that you know 
not only do we provide uniform management across this disparate network elements and technologies, but you know, for our Netflix customers where they've already got a deployment in place, that new deployment looks like their existing deployment. So from a business practice and process perspective, we make it look the same. So what's, what's great here is they can introduce this highly complex network but from an operating model perspective, which reflects, you know, UI that detects access API for all your integrations, you know, everything else. I mean, that vision, that SDN abstraction is realized even into this new, into this new world. Alex, same question. Again, you know, some, some good examples of alien aware networking and how it ultimately helps the network operators. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, two come to mind uh, quite easily. Uh, first is we have a service provider that's wanting to offer a wavelength as a service option to their customers, okay? Uh, we provided the testing and validation services to make this possible. Uh, we took the, their line system of choice and then we, we took just about every single vendor's transponder, you know, that was out there available on the market today and we're able to test and validate a complete uh, solution. Uh, you know, the, the benefit here though is the service providers offering is more competitive because they can allow their end user to choose the transponder or alien wavelength of their choice, perhaps the ones that they're familiar with in their own network. And so it winds up being a win-win for both the service provider and for the end customer. Uh, another example would be a gaming uh, customer that just wanted to reduce their data center interconnect costs. They were able to choose the best of breed uh, from a transponder solution and from a line system. And, and in the end, it resulted in a lower life cycle cost for them. That, there's a lot to unpack here, gang, but, um, uh, but and we only have a finite amount of time, as you know. But Travis, you know, this sounds like a, a pretty unique advantage. Can you talk to us a little bit about those advantages? Yeah, you, you bet, Dean. I mean, it, it you know, could continue on with a, a alien aware networking theme. I mean, we, we see more aliens, you know, than anybody else out there. We see more aliens in the wild, which is, you know, literally the production networks, as well as in our, you know, our Area 51 uh, alien, alien labs for, for DISAG technologies, you know. And the reason we can say this is, I mean, we have strong relationships with all the key suppliers in the space. We have partnerships with all of them. You know, we have access to the, the equipment itself, to their engineering resources and broader. And, you know, frankly, the same can be said for our, our customers. We're, we're doing this work with some of the largest out there. And as Alec just mentioned, we're, as we speak, we're doing tests and interop and the automation builds and all that. So, you know, uh, we're, we're, we're doing that at, at scale already and have been, you know, for some time. And, uh, you know, a, a cool uh, a qu and coincidental timing. I mean, just, just yesterday, Light Reading did a webinar and our, our buddy uh, Sterling Perrin uh, was on there and he presented some, some new uh, results he had from a, an, an analysis or study he just did uh, last month within heavy reading. And interestingly enough, what came out of that, I mean, first of all, it was 80 plus operators across the globe. And for open optical and network disag, you know, they came away and, you know, surprise, surprise, you know, three top things. Okay, who's going to test this, do interop for me? You know, who's going to help me design, deploy and build this? And then the hardest one, you know, who's going to help me build out this automation to do this end-to-end -end management? Because yeah. I'm not going to get that from any of these other players. And, you know, for Alec and I, as we listen in, you know, it was like ding, ding, ding. We, we were super jazzed because, I mean, that, that's who we are. That's what Light River does. And we've been doing that for a really long time. Yeah, no, that, it, again, a, a very, very good, uh, good explanation. Thank you for that. Uh, Alec, let's talk to the network operators now. Um, for the network operators out there, you know, what are some, what are some best practices um, that they should consider before attempting a network disag, you know, within, within, you know, your, their, you know, optical networks? Sure, great, great question. And, and actually, um, that just kind of leads us into our, I'll call it our, Area 51 uh, multi-vendor disaggregation lab. Uh, you know, in the lab, we have over $50 million worth of transport gear uh, from various vendors over even over the last 10 years, right? So we have the, the, the latest next gen and we have legacy systems, you know, that they're still trying to maximize, you know, the life cycle value there. Uh, you know, if you're going to embrace disaggregation, the real key 
is the ability to fully test that solution, you know, in a vendor agnostic environment. Okay. So that, you know, you don't get steered away from the potential pitfalls from one vendor to another. Uh, our area 51 lab allows, uh, you know, a service a provider to, to go in and test you know, all the different aspects of a disaggregated solution. And more important, once you have it tested, validated and deployed, then you need to automate it so that you're not increasing your OPEX costs on the backside, right? And I think that's really what you need to consider here is how do you get the CapEx reductions without increasing your OPEX at mm -hmm. the same time? And that's where Light River can help and our area 51 lab makes all that possible. Gentlemen, we did it. Um, thank you very much. This has been fun. I do feel like, again, that we could probably spend another hour just kind of unpacking the ins and outs of the uh, of the yeah. alien today. Unfortunately, that is all the time that we have. Again, I really uh, greatly appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you, Dean. Yep, glad to be here. Thanks. You bet.